Welcome back, folks, to another edition of Hashtag AskGSM, the weekly Monday mailbag video where you send in your questions from Facebook and Twitter, and I answer them right here in this video forum. Without further ado, let's get to the, this week's questions. We have a handful of them from Facebook and Twitter, a lot of good ones this week. The first one comes from Andre G. from Facebook. His question was, how do you think a Hulk Hogan versus Bruno San Martino match would sell at WrestleMania? Um, at nowadays, probably not all that well. I mean, Bruno San Martino obviously doesn't wrestle anymore, 50 years past his prime. But if you're taking a Hulk Hogan in his prime and a Bruno San Martino in his prime, I think that could sell very well. Um, I think San Martino wasn't really the guy at the time that Hulk Hogan came around in the early 80s and Hulkamania started to run wild, brother. Um, so I don't think that could have been a possibility at the early 80s. It might have been, but I don't think San Martino was as popular in the 80s as he was in maybe the 60s and 70s. So that being said, if, but if, if he was as popular as he was in the 60s, I think that could have sold really well, maybe in early WrestleMania. So it's kind of like a dream match, taking the biggest guys in pro wrestling history, Hulk Hogan and Bruno San Martino, arguably the faces of the WWE, two of the four, because I, I, I see San Martino, Hogan, Stone Cold, possibly The Rock, and John Cena as the top four guys in WWE history, the guys that it were the face of the WWE. So taking two of the faces of the WWE from the last 50 years with Hogan and San Martino in a match against each other and maybe the 80s or, you know, taking them in their prime against one another, I think that could have sold very, very well. Jared J asked, similar to how William Regal and Lance Storm have gained respect in this era, who in WWE currently do you see being appreciated more by fans in the future or aren't popular with fans now? Um, I picked a handful of people. I picked Goldust, uh, who technically already is kind of respected by fans, but technically still on the roster. So he's still an active competitor on the roster. So I just threw his name in there anyway. Christian, I mean, I'm a fan of him. He still has plenty of peeps left, but he's not all that popular at the moment. So when he eventually retires, which could be as soon as later this year, <clears throat> I could very well see him being gaining that respect that Regal and Storm do. Uh, Mark Henry's another guy, another very appreciated veteran. Uh, Rey Mysterio, Big Show, you can, I guess to an extent. So there's a handful of guys I think now that are kind of in that transitional period in their careers where they're in the twilight of their careers, so to speak, um, where they're going to be winding down the career soon, but they're still putting, they're still doing their job and putting others over. So I think all of those guys, once they eventually retire, or even now, like a guy like Mark Henry, who really hasn't gotten that one run with the WWE title. I know he was World Heavyweight Champion, but guys like Christian. Um, probably Goldust, obviously, will never be world champion. That's that's the way that people look at Regal and Storm, some of the greatest wrestlers in the business to have never held a world championship. So I see those kind of guys fitting into those roles from the current generation um, after they eventually retire. His second question was, do you think that, like Triple H, Wade Barrett needs a stable to maintain relevant relevancy in the WWE? Did he get much more attention? He did get much more attention in the Nexus and the Core. Well, I think the biggest push of his career obviously came during the Nexus. I mean, he was pushed various times over the last subsequent years that followed that, but not definitely not as strong as he was during the Nexus, because if you can recall, he was headlining pay-per-views. He beat John Cena at one point in, uh, at the Hell in a Cell pay-per-view in 2010. He was headlining multiple pay-per-views for the WWE Championship. So his biggest push came during the Nexus. You said he maintained relevance when he was in the core. I wouldn't say that, because the core bomb was... It, it was a... It, it was a bomb project almost from the get-go. I mean, it was a good idea in theory to have two different stables on Raw and SmackDown, but after, shortly after it started, it pretty much bombed when they started feeding with the big show in February. So it was only about a month where they were really relevant on SmackDown. And then again, that's on SmackDown, not on Raw. So obviously, I think the biggest time when he was relevant was during the Nexus. So I don't think he needs a group to stay relevant in the WWE. I think he could have been relevant um, you know, during his feud with Randy Orton in late 2011. Um, before he got injured, I think he could have been a very big player in the WWE. He could have already been a world champion by now had he not gotten injured and had he gone on to win the Money in the Bank briefcase. Same thing with late 2012 when he came back with that brawler gimmick. WWE just dropped the ball on him completely by just completely burying him as Intercontinental Champion. So I don't think he needs a group to maintain relevance. I don't think they need to move him into another tag team or another uh, another stable anytime soon to make him more relevant. But they just need to book him better. I just I, It's not his fault. It's WWE's, in my opinion. He has all the tools to become world champion. Just WWE is not utilizing him correctly. Um, Ross Est asked, who do you think deserves a major push after WrestleMania? By far, Dolph Ziggler. 
this guy got the big WrestleMania push, or the post-WrestleMania push last year, because this time last year, going into WrestleMania, he was involved in a throwaway tag team feud with Team Hell No, and then almost, the, the, literally the day after WrestleMania, he became world champion. So I think Dolph Ziggler should be the guy to get another big push after WrestleMania this year, because they're not doing jack shit with him right now. Um, Damian Sandow is another guy who had a lot of potential, who still does have a lot of potential, maybe not world title potential, but just have a, has a lot of potential to be a top player in the WWE who deserves a push after WrestleMania. Same thing with Titus O'Neil. Um, I think they see obviously big things in him. He has a lot of potential to be another big star in the WWE World Heavyweight Champion. A lot of people say so. I don't think so personally, but he is a very good character, very good. Uh, he is decent enough in the ring, and he can get over as a heel in the role that he's currently in. Um, but I just don't know where he's going to fall into the WrestleMania plans. You know, I don't know why they broke him away with Darren Young if they weren't going to do anything with either guy going into WrestleMania. They could very easily put him in a match with Sheamus or something going into WrestleMania. But at, at this point, I don't see that happening, so I just see him getting lost in the shuffle. But after WrestleMania, though, I see him probably getting a push since his best friend uh, Batista is back in WWE. That's probably going to play a factor in, in it as well. Um, at D-A-J-O-S... OSC11, I completely botched it, I'm sorry. His question was, if you could choose two people, current or past or dead or alive, to have a 60-minute Iron Man match in the main event of WrestleMania, who would it be? Now, this would sound like a very smarky answer, but by far, Daniel Bryan and CM Punk. I mean, you could you could do, like, Daniel Bryan, Kurt Angle, CM Punk, Bret Hart, Kurt Angle, Bret Hart. Those are all great matches, of course, but the first match that comes to mind that I've been wanting to see since 2012 when they started feuding two years ago Punk and Bryan in an Iron Man match for the WWE Championship in the main event of WrestleMania. I still think to this day that it should have happened this year at WrestleMania. Maybe not an Iron Man match, but it still should have happened at WrestleMania for the championship. We could have Daniel Bryan won the championship um, later last year at the Hell in a Cell pay per view. Had Punk won the Rumble, or vice versa. You know, have Punk go into the go into the event as champion. Have Daniel Bryan won the Rumble. I think that could have been a kick-ass match for WrestleMania, especially in the main event. Daniel Bryan is over right now. Punk is obviously, or was a top player in the WWE. I don't know if they can go a main event with having, without having Batista or Orton or Cena, you know, because we need to have Cena or Orton or Batista in the main event every time. But um, that being said, I think that could have been a kick-ass match, especially in an Iron Man match for the WWE Championship in the main event of WrestleMania. At Maham Akmad 9, against, again, if I mispronounce it, I completely apologize. But his question was, if Batista wins at WrestleMania, how bad do you think the universe will react? Personally, I won't freak out because if it comes down to Batista versus Orton at WrestleMania in a singles match for the WWE World WWE Championship, which I don't think it will. I think they need to add somebody at this point because that's a heel versus heel matchup since Batista technically turned heel a couple weeks ago on SmackDown. Um, I, I would much rather see, in that scenario, I would much rather see Batista win than Orton win. I, I'm pretty much getting sick as Orton as champion. I mean, he hadn't held the championship or the world championship for about two years since he won it back at SummerSlam. But he's been booked so terribly as champion. I don't know. His matches are very good. I don't know. I'd much rather see Batista with the championship, so it's a nice change of pace. But, again, if he wins the championship, the place is going to boo their asses off at WrestleMania if he wins the title in the main event, no less. I think it's a better reaction if they booed when he won the championship. Since he's a heel now, it makes more sense. It would have been worse if he was still a face and they booed. But it makes more sense now. But they will obviously be very, very, very pissed in the arena if Batista wins the championship. The only way I think WrestleMania would and should end this year is with Daniel Bryan winning the championship, or even not even winning the championship, just closing the show with everyone doing yes. That's the only passable, uh, logical scenario to end WrestleMania with this year. He's the most over guy in the company. He's the focal point of almost every storyline, all the big storylines in WWE at the moment. There's no other way they can close that WrestleMania without Daniel Bryan standing tall to kind of complete his story that started back at SummerSlam. So if Batista wins, the universe will be very, very pissed, to say the least. Uh, next question comes from at Scott JK. His question was, will Ziggler make it back to the status that he was at a year ago? It's hard to say, man. I mean, last year, at this time last year, we had two world championships. And I said this a couple months ago when we unified the championships. But with one world title now, guys like Dolph Ziggler, Damian Sandow, no, not really Christian. Um, Del Rio will probably never again hold a world championship. Cody Rhodes may never win a world title. Now that there's only one. Maybe uh, more than likely Cody Rhodes. I don't know. I think they're higher on him. They they are higher on him than they are on guys like Ziggler at the moment. <clears throat> but that being said, though, 
Will Ziggler make it back from the status he was at a year ago? Probably not, to be quite honest with you. He's been buried. Not, I, I, I use the term buried loosely, but in this guy, I think in this case it, it definitely applies. They haven't done jack shit with this guy for months now. So I don't think so, man. He isn't even on television right now. I mean, at this point a year ago, he was at least in a tag team feud with Big E and Team El No and whatever. Right now, he's not doing anything. So will he ever make it back to the status he was at a year ago? Maybe at some point down the line, I would like to think so. But any point in the near future, probably not, which is sad but true. Final question comes from at Marino 27 His question was, what's the point of Wade Barrett if he's never in the ring? I was wondering the same exact thing. The Bad News Barrett gimmick, while it is terrible mo most more often than not, um, it can be fun in small doses, like in the backstage segment with Gold Dust and Cody Rhodes. That's when it's fun. That's when it's most opportune and it makes the most sense, like when they use him in the JBL and Cole show. That's when he's entertaining. But the whole podium thing, I just think that's stupid. Like they used him um, maybe five or six times at the Elimination Chamber pay-per-view a couple weeks ago, and he hasn't been on Raw in two or three weeks. So that doesn't make any sense to me. Um, like I said before with the other question, I think he has world championship material. They're just not utilizing him correctly. But I would like to think, well, like with what they did with Fondango last year, is that they build up Wade Barrett's uh, in-ring debut, or re-debut, I should say, as Bad News Barrett, up until WrestleMania. And he makes his in-ring debut at WrestleMania. Because if he's not going to be in the ring, then what's the point of all this heat that he's getting? You know what I mean? He's getting all this good heat, whether you call it go-away heat or real heat or whatever. He's getting heat right now, and if you're not putting it to good use by putting him in the ring, then what's the point, as you said? So I would like to I, I would like to think they're going to make him have his make him have his in ring debut at WrestleMania. I get two, I have no idea, but um, I think that'd be the best course right now, best course to take, best course of action for Barrett to make his in ring debut, or bad news Barrett, I should say, to make his in ring debut at WrestleMania, because otherwise there's no point to the gimmick. So with all that being said, guys, thanks for sending the questions. Really do appreciate it. If you want to send in a question, make sure to like my official Facebook page at Graham GSM Matthews. And make sure to tweet me on Twitter with the hashtag AskGSM at Russell Rant. As always, make sure to subscribe and make sure to check back for next week's video and all the other videos that are posted throughout the week. Thanks for watching, guys. And this is GSM signing out. Until next time, guys.